Andrew, it's Jim. Hey, Jim. I just got a call from my nephew. He's in jail, stuck in North Carolina. Oh, no. I just talked with his public defender, and his public defender told me if I can send $7,000 cash to an address in North Carolina, my nephew will be released and the whole thing will be expunged. What should I do? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's back up. What's going on here, man? At this point, I'm thinking that I've got to help my friend Jim. But most importantly, this whole situation really smacks of a scam. I gotta figure out what's going on and how I can help Jim, but also make sure that his nephew is really not in jail. How do we figure out if something like this is legit or a scam? The first thing you need to do is try to reach out to the person who's actually in trouble via a known communication method that's actually under their control, such as their actual cell phone number, maybe an email, although actually talking to their live voice in person would be the best. But also maybe someone they know, like their spouse, their parent, you know, somebody who's very, very close to them who would know if they're actually in jail or in trouble or not. So that's the first order of business is to try to reach them directly. Don't just accept the incoming call as proving that they're in trouble. So as a lawyer, I'm thinking we need to figure out if this bail thing is actually correct. And we need to figure out if there is some kind of situation where Jim's nephew uh, does need bail money right now to be able to maybe make his charges go away or be diminished. It certainly sounds weird, but I not a North Carolina lawyer, maybe it's, maybe it's the truth. So the first thing I'm thinking is, surely the address where Jim's being told to FedEx a bunch of cash, surely that address is not legit. So I get on my computer and I'm researching to see if that address is a valid address for a court or something like that. And lo and behold, it's the address of the courthouse for the county where Jim's nephew is allegedly being held without bond. So it seems like, well, this money's gonna go directly to a courthouse. That seems pretty legit. The next thing I'm doing is trying to figure out about this lawyer who supposedly is the public defender for Jim's nephew. Uh, this public defender is the person who told Jim about the, the money and where it needs to go. Surely that lawyer's name is just made up, right? No. I get on the, the North Carolina Bar's website and look up this lawyer's name and find out, true enough, there is a lawyer with that name who is active member of the North Carolina Bar. So the name they gave was actually a good name for a valid North Carolina lawyer who could be involved in this situation. What's still a giant red flag in this situation is the cash bail that's being demanded to be FedEx down. We can Jim wasn't told to wire it. He wasn't told you could pay with a credit card. It was being specifically ordered to put cash in a FedEx envelope and send it to another state. And that should be a red flag to anybody, anytime, no matter what the scenario is. And in this case, it was actually $7,000 of money that was being demanded to be sent. And so that was still the red flag. As an attorney, I reached out to some fellow colleagues in the state where Jim's nephew is allegedly being held. Sure enough, that state would normally not do any kind of cash bail, especially in a circumstance like this, where it's being FedEx directly to the courthouse under the public defender's name. That definitely raised the red flag for my colleagues in that state. So I get back on the phone with Jim to try to see if he's gotten any update from his nephew to see what the situation is on his end. Andrew, this is Jim, the best news ever. I just spoke with my nephew and he is safe and sound. After thinking about it more, the initial call when he first called me, it was really muffled and it really was hard to hear if it was really his voice or not. Um, so this really was definitely a scam. My nephew is safe and sound and I really appreciate your help. Next up, do you know why it's crucial to walk and bicycle on the correct side of the road? Check out the next video.